give the Lord a shout for your pastor and first lady. It is so good to be here. I, I, I just, when I came in the door, I said, what has happened? Because I saw some new things that happened to this place. God is so good in the name of Jesus. Well, I bid you greetings from Chicago where God lives. He lives here too in Abuja. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Thanking you so much for this time in the word. Thank you for the anointing upon me in this house and these lips of clay that I speak this word with excellence, accuracy, and boldness, asking you, think through my mind, speak through my lips, and this word will come forth unhindered, unchecked by any outside force, and that signs, wonders, and miracles shall follow the word preached. Amen. Now we thank you for it. We call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you shout amen? Amen. Take your seats, take your seats. I heard, I heard Flo right over here somewhere. Whoever I heard that first, whoever it was, come up here. Whoever it was, I heard Flo right over here. Well, who was it? Who was it? Somebody over here? Okay, come on, come on out, come on out, come on down, come on down, come on. I got a hundred US dollars for you. Right. Somebody say, flow in Jesus' name. Well, it's good to be here, I tell you. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Praise God. Yeah, it's good to be here. Feels like home, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's good, amen. Well, let's, uh, we just flew in this afternoon and I'm gonna bring the word tonight then I'll have another word on tomorrow night. But, uh, amen, amen. So just, I want you to, you know, make sure you take some notes or get the tape or CD or whatever you have you or MP3. I want you to really not just listen to it one time. You, this, this is too much to listen to it just once. Um, but try to get it and meditate it and so that you can live it and everything that I speak can be happening in your life. Um, the, uh, we started in ministry years ago um, and we came to Chicago. I was with, uh, I was a fighter pilot first and then I went on to computers and IBM for 14 years and I got an executive staff there and and uh, next, God called me to leave IBM and come into the ministry, and I did that. And uh, as a result of that, um, we started a ministry in Chicago, and now it's spread out all over. Amen. One of the things that God gave me when I went to seminary at ORU, he gave me Isaiah 48, 17. I am the Lord thy God, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, which teaches thee the prophet and leads thee by the way that thou should go. I meditated that scripture, and the next thing that happened is something came out called Joseph Business School. And the Joseph Business School now, I used uh, two people in the ministry to help start a school. I used uh, Dr. Dolores Thomas, who is here with us today. Uh, I'm gonna have her to come and say a couple words. And then I also used her husband, Ray Thomas, both of them had MBAs, one from University of Chicago, Dolores has an MBA from Harvard. And so I used them both to help me start the school. I told them that this school uh, was a business school for believers and that God's gonna use believers to um, capture, recapture economies of the world. And, and so they went out, they, I told them to tell me how long it's gonna take to start the school. And they said, well, uh, it'll take about uh, two years, one to two years, and I said, okay, let me pray. So I began to pray about it, and next thing you know, the Lord spoke to me, said, tell him it'll take two months. 
So they started the school in two months, and it's now in five continents of the world. Dolores wanted to come on up. Give her a microphone, please. I want Dr. Thomas to come on up and just say a couple of words here. Praise God, if you will. Give her a hand clap. Would you give her a hand clap? She's the president of the Joseph Business School. Good evening, Abuja. Mm -hmm. It's such a pleasure to be back here. I just love your pastor and first lady. Um, such a wonderful pleasure. I tell you, you're about to take your life to a whole nother dimension. This is not just another conference, but this is the beginning of another year with 12 days of glory. And Dr. Winston being able to come and minister to you is going to be so life-changing the way he's changed my life. He will teach you how to unhook from the world system and get you to become more spiritually minded. One of the things, like he mentioned, he asked uh, my husband and I to start the school in uh, two months, although we told him it would take him, uh, although he, I, you know, sometimes he gives me the hook, like, you know, you're not the main preacher, get off the stage. So I was looking to see whether I was getting the hook, but I'll be quick. So, so, so he, he told us to start the school and in our natural ability, he told you I went to school at Harvard. Harvard could not teach me what this man of God taught me. We came and we told him based on our experience and our intellect take 24 months. He said, I need to go and pray and ask what God says his timing to be. When God told him two months and we said yes, because he says, if you believe the prophet, you shall prosper. God did something so supernatural that was beyond anything we could have ever thought of doing. 25 years later, we celebrate our 25th year coming up this March. <laughs> Only God can cause you to know and start with something small to create something great. Last year, he taught on the new dimension and the fourth dimension. I'm telling you what you're about to hear is going to change your life. But for it to change your life, you're going to have to expect that your life be changed. You're not here just to listen to another sermon. You're here to take possession of the promise that God has promised you. And you can get it tonight, but you're going to have to put that demand on him. Dr. Winston got his airplane by the spirit. He built a 33,000 acre mall, 33 acre mall by the spirit. Do you hear what I'm saying? So when he teaches you today, forget everything you've ever learned in school, forget every experience you've ever had and say, Lord, whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it and I'm ready to do it. I'm not going to play games. I'm ready to possess my inheritance. And I guarantee you, your life will never be the same. Please welcome Dr. Bill Winston. <laughs> All right, let's open our Bibles. Let's open our Bibles a couple of places here. Let's go to Romans, Romans chapter 3. What if some did not believe that it make the word of God without a non effect? God forbid. Let God be true and every man be a what? Liar. Be a liar. Romans chapter 3, verse 4. Let's look at another scripture. Come on, out of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord. It maketh what? Rich. Rich. And he addeth no what? Sorrow. No sorrow with it. Between today and tomorrow, we're going to go through these and have you get an understanding that perhaps you've never had before. You'll find that if you want to, if you want to go to another level, you're going to have to eat on another level. And so I'm going to feed you on the level that the Holy Spirit leads me so... All you have to do is grab a hold to it. Um, this idea about the blessing, I want to talk about that. Um, the pastor read a scripture here that had comfort in it. And I don't know what, what you have seen about that particular scripture, but it's talking about uh, the blessing. And um, so we'll go through this. So you're going to get some understanding now. Again, I'm going to go to another level. So just brace up. And um, we're going to um, 
what did I say? Step to another level? Yeah. All right. So another level of, of, uh, of teaching. Now, all right, let's start here with Adam. All right. Good place to start. Genesis chapter one. And Genesis chapter one, it's uh, <clears throat> over here in verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image after likeness and let them have dominion over the fish, the sea, over the fowl, of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God's giving you dominion over creeps. Now, you might know some of them in your neighborhood. you got dominion over those, or uh, so forth. I was just kidding. So, so as we look at this, here's God making man in his image and after his likeness. He made Adam, all right? So now the image the exact duplicate of kind, likeness, of course, the methodology, the uh, way mankind would function. All right, so he made it function just like him, and then he said, let them have dominion over fish, the sea, of the fowl, of the air, of the cattle, and over all the earth, all the earth, gave mankind dominion over all the earth. And then, of course, you go down to verse 28, and God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish this earth and subdue it and have dominion. All right, <clears throat> dominion, Lord have mercy. All this is good. So in dominion, we're talking about having the ability um, to have sovereign or supreme rule and authority over something. It means to uh, be able to direct and control or govern uh, at your pleasure. Um, it has to do with rulership. It has to do with caretakership. One man said it's even stewardship and ownership, having dominion. I'm having dominion over something. Now, God gave man dominion over this. Then he said be fruitful. Fruitful, of course, means to produce. To produce. Now, when he's talking to Adam, he's not talking about just producing some fruit out of the ground. He's talking about a production that comes from the superior uh, method of the spirit. A production that comes from the superior method of the spirit. Be fruitful. Multiply. Increase. Replenish. To perpetually renew and to resupply. Um, uh, and subdue it means um, to control the market if you're in business. God plans for you as a believer, whatever industry you're in, to control the market. Can I get an amen on that? Yeah. All right. So here is Adam. God made him. No, he gave Adam, of course, a prohibition. He told him, don't eat of this certain tree. And uh, here comes Satan. Now, God was operating through Adam in a phenomenal way, meaning that in uh, Genesis 2:19, uh, you could see where uh, Adam named the animals and so forth. And when he named these animals, uh, God said, "That's just right. You did it just right." So you can see that a lot of Adam's learning was by grace. It didn't have this linear picture of the first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. It didn't have that. Somehow Adam just knew what the answer was. I said, if you're gonna to go to another level, I'm gonna have to feed you on another level now. We're talking about some things here that want to take us. I'm only saying this, is, say this with me, welcome to the next level. All right, we're going to the next level here. And where are we going now? Because a lot of the church has still been hanging in a place called 3D. 3D is a place where time and space and matter are actually laws that dominate humanity. They're the things that Humanity has to cooperate with to get things done. So you got to wait on time uh, to get your healing or, you know, go to some treatments or 
have to wait on time for this flower to grow and so forth. Now, just hear me now. We're going to another level. We're going to 4D. We're going to a place where you have dominion over time, space, and matter. Can I get an amen on that? All right, now that's, that's where we're headed. Now, this is the blessing that we're talking about. So here is Adam. God told him what not to do. And so in chapter 3 of Genesis, Adam eats uh, of this tree. Now, how did he do it? Eve looked at the tree. Now, here's what I'd like to do. If somebody would do this, just cooperate with me, if you will. I'd like somebody who's got an iPad or phone or something, and you can go to different translations. I'd like you to come up and be and join me and be a reader for me. Somebody right over here in this section. Whoever it is, raise your hand. Jump up. Okay. All right. And uh, I'm going to pay you for this. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. So... Let's look here. She ate, and when she ate of it, she gave to Adam, and he ate. And once that happened, no, everything uh, turned against him. No, understand God had blessed Adam, meaning he had empowered him for success. Now, understand, this blessing is the name God gave to the power that he used to create the universe. And he gave this blessing to Adam. Why? Because Adam was going to be used by God to plant Eden everywhere he went. So God had a little space about the size of Iraq and he put Adam in it. That was Adam's home. Could you imagine having a house the size of Iraq? And so what happened is now he's got Adam and Adam's going to take the garden everywhere he goes to the worst areas of the world. The blessing is powerful enough to make Eden out of any one of those places. Ezekiel, please, chapter 36 and verse 33 and through 36. All right. And King James is fine. And if we look at this, here is a picture of it. Read, please. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 33. All right. Here's a picture of this uh, mission that the blessing can accomplish. Go ahead, please. All right. Ezekiel, I'm going to tell you one more time and then I'm going to pay you off. (laughs) Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 33 through 36. Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> Thus said the Lord God, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, from all your iniquities, I also will cause you to dwell in the cities and in the wastes, wastes shall be shall be built. Yep. And the desolate land shall be titled. Okay. Whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that pass by. Verse yes. Okay. And they shall say, the land that the Lord that was desolate is become like the garden of Eden. Now notice this land that was, I'm talking about the worst land, the Sahara Desert. Wherever it is, doesn't make any difference. The blessing is powerful enough yes. to yes. turn it into yes. the garden of Eden. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How about the worst place in the cities of your country or in the cities of America? The worst places can be turned from waste places, desolate places, crime-ridden places, into the garden of Eden with a blessing. And he gave it to Adam. This is how powerful the blessing is. And now Adam has this blessing on him, but what does he do? Eve looked and the enemy saw that she could be tempted or had an idea in his mind that she could be tempted. And he tempted Eve. She ate of the fruit. And after that, she gave it to Adam. He ate. Everything changed. Now, everything now is against him. 
The ground hates him. The animals hate him. The weather hates him. Everything hates him. Because everything that was blessed turned to the curse. Now, God lost his man and lost access to the earth in a way because God gave mankind the charge to keep the earth. It wasn't up to God. I know some of this you know, but I'm starting with something you know to go to something you don't know. And, and so what happened is here now is Adam. Now they're trying to feed themselves, if you will. Yes, sir. Go now over to uh, 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 Genesis and chapter three and verse 17. Good. And let's look at that in the Amplified Translation, please. Okay. Look at it in the Amplified Translation, all right? Now watch this. This is Genesis 3 and 17, okay? Then, Go ahead. Adam, then to Adam the Lord said, because you have listened attentively to the voice of your wife and have eaten the fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it. Yeah. The ground is now under a curse because of you. In sorrow and toil, you shall eat of the fruit of it all the days. Notice, the in earth. sorrow and toil. Yes, so you're going to eat, but you're going to work and earn and sweat for everything you get. And everything you get outside the blessing is going to bring the sorrow with it. I'll say that again. Everything you get outside the, without you using the blessing, sorrow is going to come with. A part of the curse is going to come. I don't care whether you're in politics, in finance, I don't care what it is. If you operate in the earth without the blessing, the curse is automatic. It is automatic. I'm going to the other side. Here's $100. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Amen. I'll go to the other side. All right. Now, I want you to see this here because we're talking about the power of the blessing. Anybody over here want to make $100? No? I'll just go back over here then. All right. Now, now think about this. How many of you know money can be a motivator? Okay. All right, now, here's, this, is, this is very important for you. So now the curse is loosed, loose. And now here is God, he's got to get his man back and got to get his blessing on in, in this earth so that he could finish the work that he set out to do. Bible says over uh, in... Uh, in in, in uh, Philippians, it says, no, it says, uh, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it'll not return void. So God is, whatever God says, that's what's going to happen. Yes. Say amen to that. Yeah. All right, so what happens now? So God is on a track now of recovering mankind and recovering the blessing. So, let's look here at another verse. Let's look at Genesis chapter 5 and verse 28. Uh, let's see, somebody right over here. Somebody want to make some money? Come on up here with me. All right? All right? Okay. No, no. no. Oh, you cut him off. Okay, all right, but that's, that's all right. Amen. Okay. All right. He's got a microphone, right? Okay. All right. Now, look. Look at what's happening here. <clears throat> Uh, okay, are you ready? Okay, look at Genesis chapter 5 and verse 28. So he's got an iPad there. He can't hold it. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. You're going you to do something heavy, huh? You're going to get heavy. Okay, uh, 528. Ready? Read. And Lamech, okay, and and the Lamech microphone, please. And two, and two years and begot the son. Mm-hmm. And he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil, 
of our hands. Okay, okay, wait a minute. So Limic has a son, and his name is Noah. Now watch what he says about Noah. Keep reading. Because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. Okay, okay. And he called his name. Call his name Noah. And he called his name Noah, Keep saying, going. This mm-hmm. same shall comfort us concerning our he, work. He's, he's going to comfort. He's, he's going to bring comfort to humanity. I'm prophesying that my son is going to bring comfort to humanity. You see what he's saying? He's, getting, he's speaking the blessing back in. See, you, you, if, you, if you, Lord have mercy, it takes a blessing to get comfortable. Now, so what happens now is now Noah comes. Look at Genesis chapter 9, verse 1, please. Genesis chapter 9, verse 1, I see now. I just may have to just and preach God this. Bless Noah and, his sons. and God what? Bless. bless. All right. Bless. The covenant of God that overrides the curse. That's a blessing. The blessing. The anointing of God through which divine favor flows. That's the blessing. The blessing. The empowerment for success. That's the blessing. So I'm going to empower Noah and his sons to continue on where Adam left off. So what happens? Two of his sons went to different places and they blew the blessing and just one shim he kept the blessing. Now, my point to you is here is that notice God is starting to get the blessing back into the earth. I'm going to get the blessing back. Why? Because my word won't return void. When I say that I'm going to turn waste places into gardens of Eden, that's what I mean. And so I'm saying that as this blessing passed on down next, It was Abraham, Genesis chapter 12 and Genesis 12, verse 2 and verse 3. Let's look at Abraham. Now, here is the blessing coming up and being again put in the earth so that mankind can finish the work that God gave Adam to do. And look what it says here. Ready? Read. Genesis 12 and verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. And make thee, make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. No, no, wait a minute. Okay. In thee shall all, fa- all what? Families. families of the earth be blessed. Now, if I go on down and I start looking at families being blessed, look what it says here in Genesis chapter 22. All right, Genesis chapter 22. All right, ready, read. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed, as the stars are in the, of the heaven, and as the sand upon, is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Keep going. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the head be blessed. All the what? The nations of the head be blessed. Now, before it was families. Now it's nations. Now you see what happened. Adam was going to be the beginning of the people of blessing. And everybody that came out of him was supposed to be blessed. But when he cut it off, it stopped. But now God's going to get it back. So he's going to get this blessing back on humanity. He said not only are families going to be blessed, but also nations are going to be blessed. So look what it says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. You know the scripture, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of who? Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit 
through faith. Notice what he said in 29, verse 29. If you belong to Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, what was the promise? Romans chapter four and verse 13. Let's see what the promise was that he promised Abraham because Abraham now is going to be the father of a multitude. He's going to be the one that the blessing is going to be used to get back into the earth so God could finish what he started. Go ahead and read that, please. For the promise that it should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. All right. So the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness, which is of faith. Now, my point to you is this promise to Abraham is that Abraham now is going to be used by God to recover everything that was stolen. Who stole it? The devil stole it. Luke, please, chapter five, verse, chapter four and verse five. Notice the devil stole it. Luke chapter four and verse five. Look what the enemy has said to uh, Jesus. Ready? Read. And the devil, taking him up onto the high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And keep going. And the devil said unto him, all this power I will give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. Whomsoever Keep will. going. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be If you done. just worship me, I'll give you all of this. Now notice what he's doing. He's trying to bring Jesus on his staff. So here's the devil trying to get Jesus to get it apart from the blessing. So he's now got Jesus and he's saying, let me tempt you. And it is a valid temptation, but Jesus didn't go for it. Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. So now he is trying to keep Jesus from taking it all back. But look at Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15. I'm just going through this laying a foundation here. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15. All right. Ready? And having sports principalities and power, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphant offered them in it. All right. So Jesus hung on the cross. So Satan thought he had done away with it when he hung him on the cross, but didn't. He played right into God's hands, hung him on the cross by the rabbis. Now watch this. Then Jesus went to hell and he paid the price for you and me. So once he paid that price, God raised him up out of there, but Jesus wasn't done until he defeated Satan. Watch this. And in the spirit, he took back everything that Satan had stolen. Say, take it all back in Jesus' name. See, you are here to take it all back. See, he, he, he took it back in the spirit. But now you're going to take it back right here in the tangible form. This belongs to you. It doesn't belong to anybody else's family. It belongs to the family of Almighty God. And God has sent you here to take it all back. Say this with me. I'm here. Chosen by God to take it all back. Give the Lord a praise and sit down. Sit down. Now, you look and see 1 Samuel chapter 30, please, and verse 8. They came, and while David and his men were away, and they, the enemy ransacked the camp, they took everything, took the women, took the food, took everything. David and his men came back. The men began to weep. While we were away, David, with you fighting the war, they took our children, they took it. And David put on the ephod. He went before God and said, God, what must I do? Verse 8, please. What must I do? And God gave him specific instructions. These instructions were not an option. 
These instructions were mandatory. Look what he said. Ready? Read. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Now, what I want you to do, David, is I want you to first pursue. Yeah. Say amen to that. Yeah. He said, now you'll surely overtake them, and I want you to do what? Recover. recover. Come on, you got to say it. I'm going to go to the other side. Oh. He said, recover all. Oh. It doesn't belong to the devil or his family. It belongs to the family of Almighty God. Now, I'm saying you've been sent here for this. Let me show you another one. That is the proof in the scriptures. Now, how many of you believe the Bible? The Bible says things and it gives you things. Let God be true. And what else? Let every other man be a liar. Let every man be a liar. My point to you is you got to believe the Bible. My airplane is out there in the airport because I believe the Bible. I got shopping malls because I believe the Bible. Say amen. Don't let somebody be flying around in your airplane. Believe the Bible. Don't let somebody else own your shopping malls. It's time for you to believe the Bible. Say, I believe. I'm not a doubter. I'm a believer. In Jesus' name. Now sit down. Look at Numbers, Numbers chapter 14. Now this is when some spies came back from spying out the land of Canaan. And notice what they said over in Numbers 13 and verse 33, that we are in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we are in their, their sight. Only Joshua and Caleb said, let us go up at once and possess it for we are what? Well able to overcome it. Now I'm saying this saints, because the church has been broke too long. I'm saying that this, this nation, these things, God has plans for us. We're supposed to finance, Lord have mercy. Tomorrow I'll get over into it. We're supposed to meet the budget of nations. The budget of America is approximately $6 trillion. The church is supposed to be able to meet that. I'm going to come over the other side, see? I am not talking about a little piece of money. Get that out of your mind. If the enemy can keep you there, we'll stay where we are. God wants you to rise up. Lord have mercy. Look what he says here. Okay, look what he says in Proverbs 22 and, and verse 7. This is not my message. Y'all got me going off. And I'm going I'm to I'm go where I need to go. And you, you're going to eat it. Yes. Proverbs 22, 7. Ready? Read. The, the rich ruler over the poor. The rich rules over the poor. And the borrower is servant to the lender. The, the, the rich rule over the who? The poor. poor. And the borrower is servant to the who? Lender. lender. Are you supposed to be the lender? No. Are you supposed to be the borrower? Are you supposed to be the lender? <laughs> All right, now, my point to you is, you better get a picture of who you supposed to be. I think some of us are confused. Are you still here? Now, I came here to bring you some good news. And I got proof that God has... I used the word of God and got to where I am right now. Let me show you a picture of where I started. Let me show you a picture of where I started for those doubters. And uh, look here. This is where I started. Am I right there? No. What is that? Is that the right picture? Okay. They're getting it up right now. All right. And this is where I started. This, this is a little shack that could hold 20 people. And this is where I started in Chicago. But my mind wasn't there. My mind was in that book. And I said, wait a minute. God said that I'm supposed to be the head, not the tail. Come on now. I'm supposed to be the lend. Am I right about that? So as I kept believing that, here's one of the shopping malls that we have. Is that up there? 
Jesus. All right. They're going to put it up there. Yes, All right. Now, I'm only saying that. That's where we started right there. Yes. All right. There's where. Okay. Now, that's one of them. No. When I see the pictures like this, it's because you're going for some big stuff. You don't want anything small. You've had small stuff too long. It's time to think big. Say amen. It's time to believe the impossible. I'm saying God has got you going to 4D and you better not come back down. God's going to have you doing the impossible. He's going to have you speaking like God. He's going to have you with money that you're wondering, my Lord, I didn't know I could handle all of this. I'm telling you right now, I came to announce to you today that this is the last day you're going to be where you are right now. In Jesus' name. to God. Sit down. All right. Now here's the way you're going to accomplish this. Seeds, trees, and deeds. All right. In my pocket is a seed package. Look how small it is. Now this is watermelon seeds. All in this package. And look at the watermelons from one seed. And I want to show you a picture of a tree. Now this is a tree that if you look at this, this tree is so big until you can build a highway through it. This is how big this tree is that can grow from a seed. Seeds, trees, deeds. So what happens now? So Jesus starts his ministry over in Matthew's gospel, chapter 15 and verse 13. Now let's see what it says. Watch this. Ready? Read. For he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Stop right there. Now let's substitute the word plant for tree. Every tree in you that the heavenly father has not planted... I've got plans to root it up. Now, what does a tree represent? One, a tree can represent a belief system. A tree produces. You're going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth much fruit. This is you he's talking about. It's Psalm chapter 1, verse 1, 2, 3. This is what you're going to be like. So trees. So what did the enemy do? He planted trees. He planted them from seeds. And the seeds were planted by people who misrepresented the scriptures. So they said something that caused us to believe something that was not true. Got it? And some of those trees have been growing for years. Well, you know, you never know what God may do. Well, now you do, it's in the Bible. This Bible tells you exactly what God's gonna do. So we've taken the story of Job, we've taken all this, and somebody has misinformed us. And when they came back from spying out the land of Canaan, 
Boy, it's a millionaires over here, right over here somewhere. I'm doing it. Okay, that, that, that's all over. It's all over. All right, just sit down, hush. And so, watch this. They said, we cannot take it. And look at Numbers chapter 14, please. Chapter 14, verse 1. And let's just read a couple of verses there. Going to have to read quickly now. Ready? Read. So all the congregation lifted up, the, lifted up their voices and cried. And the people wept that night. Keep going. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness. All of that crying was from what the leaders told them. That was a lie. Let God be what? True. And every man be a what? Liar. So I'm saying if you've eaten some bad seed and it's grown up inside of you, you'll find that because of what's inside of you, it's the thing that comes out of you. That you, whatever is manifesting, Lord have mercy, in your life today, you'll find it's rooted in a seed. Got it? So God, Jesus came preaching the blessing. Glory to God. And he came planting new seeds. Watch this. Over in Mark chapter 11 and verse 14, he spoke to a tree. No man eats fruit of you hereafter forever. And the disciples heard it. They heard it. Now they didn't overhear it because Jesus wasn't trying to hide what he was doing. He was using it as a 4D workshop. Lord Jesus, that thing came out. Are you following what I'm saying? He was teaching his disciples. Now notice, some people won't speak to a tree. Why? Because of protocol. Well, no. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I can't speak to no tree. I mean, what, what will people think? What do they think? That's what got you where you are. You are busy trying to act like what they think. If you're going to follow Jesus, you're going to break protocol. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, the blind Bartimaeus over in Mark chapter 10 sat by the highway side begging and notice he said, who's coming? And they said, Jesus is coming. And notice blind Bartimaeus said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Notice what Jesus did. He kept walking and the people start saying, tend to blind Bartimaeus, shh, shh. Hush, man, we're having a seminar. Hush. And blind Bartimaeus did what? He, I better go over here. Blind Bartimaeus did what? Come on, blind Bartimaeus cried louder. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible says Jesus stopped. Let me tell you, you better break protocol because you can stop Jesus if you break protocol. You may need some money you better break protocol. You may need your healing tonight. You better break. I'm telling you right now. Sit down. This is your year. You will experience a series of breakthroughs. <laughs> praise and uh, sit down, sit down. What about the man? He was lame. Matter of fact, he couldn't walk. They had him on a stretcher, but he had four crazy friends and they were carrying him on the stretcher and they came to the house where Jesus was in there teaching and preaching. And all the religious leaders were blocking the door. How many of you know sometimes religion blocks the door? 
And the next thing they did is they couldn't get in by the door, so what did they do? They went up on the roof. Am I right about it? Come on, break protocol now. They had to go up to the Boom. See, you, you're busy trying to please everybody. You're trying to look, well, let me look respectable. Let me this. Let me tell you, when the Holy Ghost leads you, you better watch out. You're going to have to get some courage. And he's got it for you. But you got to be willing to cooperate with him. Say amen to that. <laughs> Seeds of dominion. All right, let me show you. Here's Jesus. Now they're on a ship going from one side to the other. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. They're going from one side to the other. All of a sudden, a storm comes up. Jesus is asleep. Jesus got awakened by the disciples. Why? They said, Master, don't you care, I'm putting it in my own words, that we're about to die? This storm, this is a perfect storm. It was going to take him out. Jesus woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, peace be still. Now, where did that come from? Look at Psalm 89 and verse 9. You're going to read that. Psalm 89 and verse 9. Ready? Read. You rule the region of the sea. When it waves rise, you still the... You can put that seed inside of you and rule the raging of the sea. Did you hear what I'm saying? This is called, you're you're recovering the dominion that God gave Adam in the beginning. He gave him dominion over how much of the earth? That includes storms. How many of you know Satan can stir up a storm? I don't know if you know it, but he did it in Job's life. And he did it out here. Notice Jesus rebuked the storm. If the storm was from God, would Jesus have rebuked it? No, you know that. It wasn't from God. It was the devil trying to kill him. And what people say, well, you know, the Lord's trying to teach me something. No, the devil's trying to kill you. Newsflash. Let's look at another seed of dominion. Isaiah 43, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 43, verse 1 and 2, in your best voice. Go ahead. (laughs) But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Keep going, keep going, keep going. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. If you pass through the water, I'll be with you. Let me, let me, let me. me. (laughs) You you pass through the water, I'll be with you. Keep going, next. And through the rivers, you shall not over, you shall not overflow you. And through, keep going. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be born. Whoa, 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 whoa. When you walk through the fire, what will happen? You shall not be born. All right, let's look at Daniel. Daniel chapter 3 and verse 7. Come on, come on, Daniel. Come on now. You see what I'm saying? You can, you can build inside of you a tree of dominion over everything that exists in this earth. i got news for you right over here. You'll never be broke another day in your life. In Jesus' name. Now take that as a seed. Sit down. All right. (laughs) Okay, now, notice Daniel chapter 3, verse 17. Ready, read. Where's the scripture? Ready, read. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fresh furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Now, no, 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 no. no. The king is saying, hey, you're going to have to bow down to this 
demon. And if you don't, we're going to throw you in the fire. Notice what they said. King, we respect you. And we believe, you believe, you can do that. But the God that we serve, say amen. The God that we serve, he will deliver us. Say amen to that. Did the king heat the fire up seven times hotter? Question. How hot does fire have to be to burn you, burn you up? How hot does it have to be? Just fire. Why do you think he heated it up? He heated it up to make them bow. And I'm telling you, when you start standing on that seat of dominion, that enemy might try to heat it up and make you think it's not working. When you've done all that you can do to stand, Stand. Sit down. Oh, Lord. Here's a hundred dollars. God bless you. Amen. Did a good job. Give him a hand clap. Did a good job. Next. Who said that? Come here, 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 come here. You better hurry up before I change my mind. Come on up here. Come on, who, 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 who was it? Where is it coming from? No, 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 you didn't say it. Here, come over here. You said it. Nobody came? Oh, okay, here, here, come here, come here. All right, that's all the money. So if you're hoping I'll give you some, that's all the money. Okay. All right. Okay, now what are we saying? Desire. Lighting the fire of desire. God will give you the desire of your heart. But he must wait until your desire matches his desire. Now, God desires for you to have the best, the best of everything. I'm, I'm saying the best of everything. Prodigal son. Prodigal son, you know the story over in Luke chapter 15. Look at verse 12. Here's what the prodigal son says. I want my inheritance now. I'm out. The father gave him his inheritance and he left. Went out there in the world, and the world stripped him, took everything he had, then gave him a job feeding hogs. And as he was now contemplating on eating, eating hog slop, he came to himself. He came to himself. He said, wait a minute. Even the servants in daddy's house have more than enough to spare. And I'm out here eating this slop. I'm going home. When he came, coming home, the father saw him a long ways off. The father came, ran up to him, hugged him. Now the boy is smelling like hogs. Hugged him, kissed him, and brought him back. Come on back. The son went back. Son said, Listen, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight. 
I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. The father ignored it. And this is what he said in verse 22, among the other things. He said this, bring the best robe and put it on him. Watch this, watch this. He didn't even say, bring the one on sale. Best. You go in that scripture and you'll see in Genesis chapter 45, God told Joseph, send for your father and them and bring them down. I've got the best land for them. Look at Genesis chapter 47, uh, uh, chapter 47, and you'll see here, God gave God's uh, Israel the best land. I'm just saying, if you look at the best, what is the best for you? The best is not to get sick and get healed. The best is to never get sick. Say, I want the best. So I'm saying, if you just look across the board and see what the best is, God has the best for you. I said, I came to tell you God has the best for you. But he needs you to desire what Jesus died to provide. And he's got the best for you. Now, let me just cover one more thing. And no, let me just give you this. Read in your own time, John chapter five. John chapter five is when um, the man sat by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. Watch this. Jesus came by ministering. He said this, watch this. Saw this man and he's, looked over at him and said, would you like to be made whole? He said, sir, I I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool because the idea was an angel came down at a certain season, troubled the water. Whoever first jumped in was healed of whatever they had. And the man said, I've been waiting here for 38 years. I'm, I'm putting my own words. He said, I want you to do something. Get your desire in place. Rise. Take up your bed and walk. Wow. Now I'm saying sometimes we're waiting when God wants us to desire it right now. Your wait is over. I said your wait is over. This lady in Dr. Cho's book, he came to visit one of his fellow pastors and she, before they went to lunch, the pastor said, oh, can you pray for her? He said, yeah, what is she needs? Well, she's looking for a husband. And he turned to her and said, how long have you been been believing for a husband? She said, I don't know, 10, 12 years. He said, what have you been praying? You see? Now I'm saying the things were taught us about about 3D that we got to wait on time. But I got good news for you. You're going up to 4D. Going up to another level now. He said, here's what I want you to do. Put 10 qualities down that you want. Then I want you to say them every day for 30 days. And look in the mirror as you say it. Give some instruction. This is in Dr. Cho's book. And so she did that. She took the instructions. He left town and after he gave her the instructions, came back. Came back the next year, same pastor friend he visited. And the pastor said, oh, by the way, before we go to lunch, I just want to let you know she got married. He said, who? He said, remember the lady you prayed for when you were here before? He said, oh, yeah. He said, what happened? He said, well, shortly after she started doing what you told her to do, a group 
of people came to town, a group of men came to town, and they were musicians, and they were out for the summer. They were all school teachers, and they were playing, you know, the gospel music and so forth. And there was one, this guy who was very attractive, and all the women just swooned over him. But he didn't like anyone but this one. And before he left that meeting, he asked for her hand in marriage. Yes, sir. Now, I'm just saying something to you now. There are some trees inside of us that shouldn't be there. Jesus cursed that tree. That tree, it says, out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth will speak. Your, your, your belief system is going to control the boundary of your life. And what you got to do is we're going to have to sow some new seed so that we can get some new trees that we can do some new deeds. You got what I'm saying? Last thing. All right, this one will start tomorrow night. Uh, did you get something out of this tonight here? We're going to start tomorrow night on the blessing. On the blessing. See, don't look at yourself as a believer and look at somebody else who's not a believer and think your life is going to have to be like that. Don't do that anymore. Those days are over for you. You, God has given you special privileges. You've got something called favor. And when favor is on you, it's worth a lifetime of labor. So I'm saying the favor, oh Lord have mercy. The faith, give me that water. The favor of God is going to be on you from this day forward because I'm now throwing this favor on you. It's going to be on you from this day forward. The favor of God. Glory to God. Sit down. Something happened then. I'm talking about you, your wait is over. All right, sit down, sit down. Now let me just give you this and I'm done. All right. The blessing of the next section. Welcome to the next level. Amen. All right. Let me just show you how this is going to go tomorrow night. <laughs> All right. This friend of mine named Jerry and another friend named Charles, they were going to speak at a meeting, kind of like this. And Jerry was going to speak first, and then Charles was going to speak. And Charles, Jerry said to the moderator, how much time do I have? Because you've got one hour. Oh, okay. And who speaks after me? Charles speaks after you. Oh. Well, I think I'll just take Charles' this time, too. <laughs> I laughed about it. So Jerry began to speak. Looked at his watch, had plenty of time. He kept speaking. Looked at his watch, had plenty of time. He kept speaking. Looked at his watch. So what, wait, wait a minute. Hold on, my watch has stopped. What time is it? Here's what the moderator said. You've not only taken your time, but you've exactly taken Charles' time too. Jerry said, Charles, I apologize. He said, let me just say one thing. I don't need to speak. I just want to say this. Jerry has trained his spirit to bring to pass everything he says. I'll try that again. Jerry has trained his spirit to bring to pass everything that he says. Now, if you look, and I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to help call anybody up. I'll do it myself. Uh, if you look at uh, Genesis, and Genesis chapter 31, 
and you look at about the scriptures of verses 31 or so, you'll see that Jacob left Laban because the blessing worked on him and he took everything Laban had. And then Laban caught up with him and Laban said, you left and took my daughters, took, got all the money and you've taken my gods. He said, I didn't take your gods. He didn't know it, but his wife, one of them, had put the gods of Laban under the saddle. And this is what uh, Jacob said. Whoever took your gods, let them not live. Over in Genesis chapter 35, what happened to his wife? She died. Jerry has trained his spirit to bring to pass everything that he says. You see, faith does not come out of your head. Not one ounce of faith comes out of there. Faith comes out of your spirit. And you can train your spirit. Are y'all still here? You can train your spirit to bring to pass things that are totally impossible. In fact, you were never made to say anything you didn't want to happen. Now, thank God, a lot of spirits are not, have not been trained yet because we've been saying a whole lot of stuff. My feet are killing me. You, you know, that kind of stuff. Now, I cancel that in Jesus' name. Because tomorrow, I want to teach you how to train the human spirit. Now, I'm saying something here. When you train that spirit, your spirit, you're going to find that you are going to be able to do things that are totally impossible. Why? Because that's how Jesus functioned. His spirit was carrying out the work that had to be done. See, God's preference is not to come down to our circumstance-driven life, but to bring us up to our circumstance-dominating spirit. Say amen to that. And this is what I'm going to teach you tomorrow. Now, don't, don't get afraid about it because God knows how much you can take. He, he knows, Lord have mercy, but Lord have mercy, I'm not going to apologize. You just develop your spirit. There are the, you, you see, we, Lord have mercy, we, that Shanda, we can, Lord have mercy. Here's what David said. This day shall the Lord deliver you, what? Into my hands. Watch this. I'm going to take your head off. I'm going to feed the whole army to the buzzards of the air. Did that happen? I'm telling you now, this kind of power is in your spirit. All right, Peter's catch. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna walk off after I do this. All right, the 4D, amen. Now, I'm taking you up to the next level. Folks, listen, to stop the devil, you're gonna have to not do it out of your head. You're gonna have to do it out of your spirit. Okay, are you with me here? The force of faith comes out of your spirit. It's powerful. All right, now watch this. And the mind cannot conceive how powerful it is. Watch this, watch this. Here's Peter. Peter's out there fishing. Came in, washing his nets. Jesus preaching on the shoreline. Watch this. Here comes Jesus said to Peter, can I use your boat? Why? They're pushing on Jesus because he's preaching this, 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 this 4D message. Lord have mercy. And so next thing you know, Peter said yes. 
And then he got in the boat and said, Peter, could you push out a little from the shore? And he began to sit down and taught. Now, when he finished speaking, he said to Peter, this is all Luke chapter five, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. Now, notice what he said. This is my own words. Launch out into the deep and you will catch a lot of fish. Now, notice Peter said, wait a minute. Verse five, we've fished all night and taken what? Nothing. Nothing. Nevertheless, come on, help me. At the word, I'm going to launch out. Now question, did he launch out? Yes. Did he catch fish? Here's my question to you, and I'm going to quit on this. Where did the fish come from? Now watch this. The lake, I'm going to give you a key. The lake had been fished dry. Twerked no fish. The woman whose kids were about to be taken, her two sons, and she went to the prophet. The prophet said, what do you have in your house? She said, I don't have anything in the house left a little jar of oil. He said, that's enough. Bring it. He said, go borrow some vessels. Don't borrow a few. Come in, shut the door with you and your sons and begin to pour out. Did she do that? Yeah. Pour it out, fill up one big vessel. Pour it out, fill another big vessel. Pour it out, fill another big vessel. Where did the oil come from? This man had a meeting, this is true. And he had a meeting and this meeting was an evangelistic meeting and God told him to have it. He told God he didn't have much money, but God said, that's all right, you just have the meeting. Had the meeting, they took an offering up. Now he's got to pay for the facility and everything and he got the offering, they went back and counted it and he's, they were way short. He said, God, we don't have enough money. We, we, we are short. He said, tell them to count it again. They counted it again, and they had more. Then they didn't have enough. He said, God, we're still short. Tell them to count it again. I'm just saying, your days of shortage are over. You are going to 4D. You are going to get from the invisible everything God has for you, and you'll never be broke another day. Praise, give him a thank you. Now, if you will, take your seats. I'm gonna come back tomorrow night. We're gonna talk about this 4D and talk about the blessing. We're gonna talk about how to make the blessing work in your life. God will give you an assignment. He said, I want you to go down here and, and, and work at this McDonald's. Don't even be concerned about their little minimum wage because you're not living on that anyway. <laughs> the blessing of the Lord, it brings wealth. It makes you rich, not a McDonald's. God's going to show you, Lord have mercy. Just come up here next week, next, next, tomorrow night, we're going to talk. Amen? Amen? Now, let me ask you something. Did you get something out of the Word today? <laughs> Say this with me. From this day, stand to your feet. Lord, have mercy. From this day forward, I'll never again be an unbeliever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe the word, the whole word. What the word says is what's going to be in my life. Every tree that Jesus did not plant, I want it out. I want it out now. I am now, from this day, going to do exploits. I'm going to do things that are going to set the captives free. 
I'm going to watch Jesus and do what he did. I'm going to speak like God, think like God, and act like God. He is in me now. Now from this day forward, I'll never be broke. I'll never be sick. I'll never be lonely. From this day forward, the joy of the Lord will be my strength. Now I decree it. It is done. In Jesus' name, now give him your best shout. Okay.